Hi everyone. My name is Sujay Desai, a PM on System Center team. Hi, I'm Bhavna Appaya. I look after SCOM and I'm excited to discuss System Center with you today. Together, we are hosting this session on what's new in System Center at Windows Server Summit this year. Let us start discussion with a quick recap about System Center. I'm sure all of you are familiar with the product suite, the single license that provides all around capabilities for management of your Hyper-V fabric and the Windows VMs. Hey Sujay, the loyal System Center crowd knows this. How about we try playing out a typical conversation our customers go through to make this more relatable? Bhavna, really? You want to show your acting skills on the stage? Yeah, why not? All right, bring it on. I want to be the voice of our Windows admin friends. You should take the stand as the newbie in the team. Game on. Please assume we meet at the water cooler and are walking to your office. All right, let's begin. Hey, Sujay, how have you been? Long time no see. How is life treating you? It's been great, Bhavna. Windows Server deployments in the organizations are at all time high. It's been so exciting to extend the practices and systems. It is pushing me to the edge. Can't wait to add the next 100 servers. Wow, that must be quite taxing. How do you do all this? I can't seem to see the bed in your office. Not at all. Thankfully, Microsoft didn't just give us Windows Server. It also kept the interest of administrators like me in mind. With System Center, they have given fit-for-purpose products for simplifying deployment, configuration, monitoring, protection, and process automation. It's been just a savior. I had deployed this long time back, connected the fabric to them, and now I just update them and get the new functionality. Sounds like yet another set of deployments. What do you do if you encounter any issues? Windows keeps adding new functionality. How do you keep up? Well, Microsoft has been quite wonderful. They release new version of the tool set with every new Windows Server release and provide update rollups regularly. These updates are not just bug fixes, but have features update as well. Oh, so did you get a new version with Windows Server 2022? Absolutely. That's the newest, newest version. I'm loving playing around with it. Tell me more. This is exciting news. Oh, my dear friend, where do I start? It's been so long. Let me talk to you more about System Center 2022. That would be great. You see, they know that our environment is changing. It's not just Windows, but Azure Stack at CI, VMware, and other infrastructure managers are at play. To top it, this is cloud thing that has come up. I'm glad they have taken care of it all. These sound more like buzzwords, marketing material. Are they really serious? Let me show you a few things. There is always a need for us to get a richer control and insights across the applications, workloads, and infrastructure. As an example, you remember last quarter we had that company-wide audit and the auditor had asked to review our alerting strategy? Yeah, he was such a pain. Kept on asking for more information. You were such a savior to get him direct permissions. I hated being the postman. I understand. It was hard on me too. I had to choose between giving him admin permissions or not. Finally, we did. It was quite a risk. Really? I didn't know you gave him all rights on the SCOM environment. Yes, I had to. But thankfully, we don't have to do that next time another audit comes around. SCOM 2022 has enhanced the RBAC, and I can now manage the granularity of permissions assigned. See, it works like this. SCOM 2022 introduces a new built-in role, read-only administrator, that provides all the read permission in operation manager, including reporting. This is particularly useful for cases where we need to provide auditor access to SCOM. This new role now gives access to every setting in SCOM in every navigation pane, but they will not be able to change anything. Also, creating a custom role is now simpler with delegated administrator. 
under new user role, you have the option to create a new delegated administrator role. Start with the wizard. Assign an appropriate name for the role. Assign required permissions that you want to delegate to this role. And click create. Once the role is successfully created on the console, you can see the custom role created and displayed under the user roles. That's all. What a relief. Tell me one thing. It's been quite hard for me to keep track of the alerts that get generated in SCOM. Is there something that can be done? Well, Microsoft seems to be reading your mind. They just added Teams integration to SCOM. Really, what does that mean? See to yourself. The alerts are now appearing directly in your Teams channel. Wow, this really helps to get real-time alerts and active collaboration across Teams. So what else is new here? Remember, I mentioned unification of a management across the diverse workloads and infra. We have Windows VMs, Linux VMs, Azure Socket CI clusters, and VMware vCenter deployments. All of those can be managed through the same tools. Not just management, they also have help in moving between the virtualization managers, VMware to Hyper-V in particular. So the move from VMware 7 must be a piece of cake for you. Well, update rollup one is here, and that's going to make my life easier. It will add support for VMware 7, HCI 22H2, and SQL 2022. That's quite a bit of expansion. I'm impressed and jealous. How come you get all the credit when the real star is system center? By the way, Sujet, are you concerned about the whole cloud migration thing that our manager was talking about? Well, initially, yes. I was a bit concerned about having to redo all the configurations and workload-specific tweaks that I have done over the years. But then I came across this guidance from Microsoft specifically for my need where all the existing configurations can be easily reused. Seems like Microsoft is reading your mind as well, my friend. Well, you can say so. For each system center products, they have suggested Azure experiences that I can move to. For example, I can use Azure Update Management for patching my servers in Azure, Azure Backup to protect the servers, and Azure Automation to continue running my custom scripts in cloud. You can also manage your on-prem Hyper-V servers from Azure by ARC enabling your SCVMM deployment. Also, I saw the SCOM experience in the list. Didn't our manager say we'll have to rewrite monitoring rules based on the logs for my application? Yeah, old school. They now have SCOM managed instance. With that, I can move your existing management pack configuration from SCOM to Azure and hook it up with the deployment of your app on the Azure VM. Let me show you how you would move. Let's begin with the brand new SCOM MI instance that I have created for the sake of this demo. It generally takes about 45 minutes to create a new SCOM MI instance. This is really quick. As you know, it takes generally two to three days to do it on-prem. On the overview page, I can see all the properties of the SCOM MI instance called MI Demo 04. The UI is modern and user-friendly. Great. Can you now walk me through how I can reuse my existing IIS MP configurations? That will help me decide if SCOM MI meets our hybrid monitoring needs or not. Let's connect to our on-prem SCOM instance, Contoso. As you can see, we have configured two override rules in this IIS MP that we need to import to SCOM MI. Now, I'll connect to the SCOM MI instance via the same ops console. I'll import the IIS override configuration that I have already exported from our on-prem SCOM. Okay, the import is complete. Let's verify if we, if we have the override rules. Okay, that looks good. Well, that was easy. Looks like everything is working as is, and we don't have to reconfigure any rules. Saved a lot of time and effort. Awesome. Next, 
Let me show you all the other shiny features in SCORM MI. Let's get back to the new SCORM MI instance we created. You can see all the management server details and its related metrics in the infrastructure blade. Not only that, you can scale your instance at the click of a button as well. You just have to add the number of endpoints you would like to monitor and voila, the number of management server recommended are added. This can be used to scale the management server based on your needs. Also, you now have reporting via Power BI with which you can easily create fancy reports for your manager. Last but not the least, remember those times when you used to fear even thinking about having to update your SCOM instances. SCOM MI provides single click experience to update your SCOM MI instance. Wow, this looks great. Looks like SCOM MI is going to be the answer to a lot of my headaches around managing SCOM infrastructure and hybrid monitoring. This is all I had today. Let's now come back to our original avatars. Hope it was exciting. Thanks a lot, Sujay. This was an amazing walkthrough. I enjoyed the act. Hoping our friends in the audience liked it too, and they now plan to try out these exciting products and services. For more details or feedback, please write to us at systemcenterfeedback at microsoft.com. And thank you everyone for joining us today. <laughs>